So in my last video, I mentioned how principle number one of Scott Young's book, Ultra Learning, is meta learning, draw a map. You want to draw a map of the skill you're going to learn. Now, Ivana asked how exactly one draws a map. And I'm going to explain how I'm approaching skill map drawing uh, on this month's skill chunk, which is cooking. Now, of course, the caveat here is that I'm learning as I go on this. So this is just my current understanding of how to draw a map and my first thoughts on it. I'm really glad, Yvonne, that you asked this question because as I tried to answer it on the comment, I realized I didn't have a very good answer. Um, and I, so I figured out some things that I didn't understand about it. So for me, actually, Scott's use of, of calling it a map confused me, um, but it made more sense to me when I decided that what Scott meant was draw a map with a dashed line and an X marks the spot on it. Like draw the map, figure out what the landscape of learning is, and then figure out where you want to go and how to get there. Um, so, so with that in mind, uh, based again, based on Scott's book, this is what I came up with. You start with the, the what, the why, and the how. So what do you want to learn? For cooking, I want to learn the principles and techniques of good cooking so that I can make tasty, nutritious food for other people. This is a key point uh, without worrying that what I'm making will be weird or gross. Um, like I said, if my taste buds were my eyes, they wouldn't let me drive. Um, I, and I, I just haven't paid much attention to flavor for my entire life, even though I cook every meal I make. So uh, I basically don't trust myself to be able to make food that's tasty for other people. Now, I actually think that for an ultra learning project, what I just said, it's a little too broad. Like, how do I know when I'm done? This is a project that I think you need to be able to answer for an ultra learning project. How do you know if you've succeeded or failed? Uh, so to be honest, I'm still working out the answers to those questions, but I think that I'll know I succeeded if I can cook, if I have like a repertoire of a few different dishes for dinner and a few different breakfasts that I can cook for other people and not be stressed about it and be pretty sure that they actually enjoyed the food. Um, and then if I feel like I've mastered, uh, I feel like I've, if I feel like I've developed competence in enough skills and techniques and just a general understanding of cooking so that in the future I'll be able to steadily improve my cooking, whereas right now I'm stagnant, I'm not getting any better. Um, if I can feel like I'm doing that, that will be a success. Uh, so why do I want to learn this? Well, I want, honestly, the core of it for me is that I want to be able to express my gratitude for other people by cooking food that they're delighted to eat. I, and I, I don't want to enjoy that process. I want to be able, I want to be good enough so that it's possible for me to enjoy the process of cooking tasty food for other people. Right now it's stressful because I'm pretty sure that when I cook for other people, it's weird and gross for them. And that doesn't feel good. That's like, that's a bad, that's not a gift, right? That's giving someone else a bad experience. I want to be able to give people good experiences and I want to be able to express my gratitude towards them by providing these experiences for them with food. Um, also cooking, even if I'm just cooking for myself, it's an opportunity to practice devotion in a craft. Um, you know, and engage in lifelong improvement of a skill, which for me is intrinsically worthwhile. It's a very, you can develop a lot of stoke for that, I think. And I'm going to cook 99% of all the meals I eat, whether I know how to cook well or not. So I might as well make them tasty and delicious and nutritious. Um, and the final why is that I'm interested in bringing people together uh, a lot of what I'm doing in my life now is starting to centralize around that and people come together around food. And in 2023, I had a number of experiences where that kind of, I, I kind of knew that, but I had some experiences where that it just became really obvious to me and really visceral to me. So learning how to cook better is just kind of a no brainer. Okay. How? This is the core of the map. How are you going to learn? How do you learn to cook? What materials will I use to learn? How exactly am I going to practice and what are the concepts, facts, and procedures for the skill? So what are the typical ways someone learns how to cook? Well, there's culinary school. I'm not going to do that. There's working in a professional kitchen. I'm not going to do that. There's cooking classes. I would consider that, but ultra learning is a very self-directed thing. So I don't know if that would even apply still. Um, but also I live out in the boonies. There's no cooking classes near to me. So it's not a reasonable option. Uh, from family, I, I, I get the sense that a lot of people 
learn cooking, you know, from growing up in the family kitchen, learning from their parents. Uh, I certainly learned some things about food growing up, but I was a stereotypical rambunctious boy. I did not sit still long enough to learn very much of anything uh, in the kitchen, even though mom, mom's an excellent cook and she did almost all the cooking and it was all delicious. I could have learned a lot, but I did not. Uh, the other way people learn to cook is they learn from books, the internet, and lots and lots of cooking. That's what I'm going to do. So what materials will I use to, to cook, learn cooking? Uh, salt, fat, acid, heat by Samer Nozrat. The Science of Good Cooking. Those are the two main sort of texts I'm going to use. Uh, various other cookbooks. I've got, there's a whole stack. Recipes from online, cooking YouTube channels, and then uh, conversations with friends. So the core of it. How am I going to practice? Uh, I'm going to cook two meals a day. I only eat two meals a day. I don't, I don't eat three meals a day. Every meal is going to have a specific learning objective. Uh, so, for example, uh, today's Wednesday. I've already been cooking for two and a half days. Uh, making tortillas has been a key thing I've been trying to learn. Um, uh, I've been making pico de gallo, Mexican rice, etc. So, But every meal I wrote down, like, okay, for this meal, I'm trying to learn X. Um, I record everything in my cooking journal. Um, I, I both lay out my plans and I, I say what I'm going to do. And, and then I record what I did in my cooking journal every week at minimum, uh, has a theme so that I'm not just making totally wild, random dishes. This week is Mexican food. Uh, I might make that the whole month Mexican food. So this month is actually burritos specifically. I'm trying to figure out how to make good burritos or at least get myself started in the direction of being, being able to make delicious burritos from scratch and um, I used to live in the mission in San Francisco for a little bit so I'm trying to make mission style burritos I have so much nostalgia for those I'd love to be able to make something in the neighborhood of as good as um, what I used to get at Alfredo so uh, and then at the end of each week I'm going to do my best to line up cooking for friends or family or whoever but to cook for other people again that's that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, that's the main thing I'm trying to do. I'm trying to learn how to cook for other people. So I'm going to line up, uh, cook. So I've already got that lined up, uh, this weekend. I'm going into town, hang out with my friends. I'm cooking them dinner Saturday night, and then I'm going to cook brunch on, on Sunday. And then I'm going to come home and I'm going to cook for my parents. They're uh, on a vegan, no oil thing. So that's going to be a challenge, but I'm going to easy to do with Mexican food. I think, uh, I'll repeat every sub skill until I feel like I have a good handle on it. So I'm not just going to like try to make tortillas. It doesn't work. And then I move on to the next thing. Uh, I'm going to maintain a lot of flexibility. So I'm just going to repeat everything until I feel like I've got a good handle on it. And then I can incorporate that into practice. Then I'm going to move on to the next sub skill to learn every weekday. I'm going to aim for three to four hours of cooking, uh, and one to two hours of study. Um, so four to six hours, on cooking a day five days a week except on the weekends i'm also doing this so anyways a lot of cooking uh and then the study looks like processing books like salt fat acid heat or taking notes from youtube channels researching you know, like if i'm struggling with something a technique or a concept or something then that will guide what i'm going to study so i'm like ah i've I read something about this in a book or i'm going to look up like why do my tortillas suck uh, so that, that will also guide my study. I don't have like a specific, you know, day by day curriculum list. Cause I don't think that's, imp uh, I don't, I, that wouldn't be good f for this skill. I don't think that's a good way to approach it. I think too much structure would be bad. I, I think I need to be able to adapt with, uh, the skills that are relevant to what I'm learning. By the way, I've been really, uh, influenced by Aaron's book, how to take smart notes. That is my philosophy of note taking. I highly recommend if you like information and knowledge and gathering wisdom, uh, you should read that book. Uh, if you care about thinking well, you should read that book. Um, okay. So that's how I will practice. And then this next bit I think is really core to like fleshing out that map of the skill. And that is, taking a stab at understanding what the concepts, facts, and procedures for the skill are. So for example, uh, some concepts that as they relate to cooking are like bread, right? The relationship between gluten, protein, water, temperature, salt, fats, time in different kinds of wheat and how those variables affect rice, chewiness, tenderness, crumb, flake, all that. 
uh, what salt does to protein strands, like why it's magic when you salt beaten eggs before you scramble them and, and let them rest. Uh, understanding salt diffusion and osmosis, understanding the Maillard reaction, the effect of heat on flavor lock-in, autolyse, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, autolyse, autolyse, when you rust dough. Uh, so those are some examples of concepts, examples of facts are that 16 tablespoons equals a cup, three teaspoons equals a tablespoon, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, procedures and techniques, how to hold a knife, how to chop food and not your finger, how to knead, do the stretch and fold, roll out dough, how to mix pancake batter properly, how to flip pancakes without getting them everywhere, you know, the saute movement, things of that nature. So that's that's kind of the map. And then, you know, like I said, my my sort of dotted line is is I'm kind of making up as I go with this skill in particular. I don't have a specific X marks this spot. Like I'm taking it kind of week by week. This week is burritos. I'm not sure what next week is going to be yet. I'll figure that out uh, when I get there. Um, and then the other part of this like sort of design is after this month is up, how will I retain and or continue skill development? So this is mapping after the ultra learning project proper is over. How do I make sure that the skill doesn't just evaporate? It doesn't just go away. Um, do I care about that? So for cooking, this is an easy one. I cook almost every meal I eat. So I'm going to get two reps of this skill in almost every day for the rest of my life. Now I could choose to not push myself and not get any better. So in this month, I'm going to go from not very good at cooking to better. How, how much better? I don't know, but I will get better. And hopefully that will be fairly locked in. I could just cruise there, but I think I will be able to, having learned a lot of the concepts and techniques and fundamentals of cooking, I will be able to fairly easily incorporate a practice where I steadily get better from that point. So during this month, I'm going to rapidly get better. But then after that, I think I'll still be able to get better gradually. And so that's my intent. Since I know that I can tolerate repetition, what my plan is, is to pick one new dish, technique, concept, whatever to work on at a time and repeat it until I feel like I've got it locked in. So for example, I might, after this month is over, if I haven't gotten into omelets, let's say, I might decide, you know what, I'm gonna make omelets every single breakfast for a month and, or however long it takes until I feel like, you know what, I got omelets, I know how to make them moist and fluffy and nice and the fillings and make them tasty and bright and whatever else and then Okay, you know, that wasn't that hard. Um, after that, uh, maybe I'll, I'll decide to make sourdough bread and I'm just gonna make sourdough, like I'm gonna make sourdough bread and then eat it and then make more sourdough bread and then eat it. And I'm just gonna keep making sourdough bread until I don't even need to look at the instructions and I like it and other people are like, yeah, this is good sourdough bread. Uh, I also, in terms of continuation, I intend to begin a practice of hosting a hedonic dinner night once a month for friends. This is an idea I totally stole from Cody, uh, Cody Markels, who was on the podcast. Um, and a hedonic dinner, the, the aim for that is A, just to get with friends and family and have a good time, but it'll also be a regular test of my abilities, my ability to cook for others, as as well as an, an event to motivate learning new dishes. I'm like, okay, this month I'm going to make chili. I don't know, whatever. And then I can learn about it. I can practice on my own. And then when the big day comes, I make it and it's delicious and I get good feedback from other people. And it, it just on, uh, goes on like that. So my final thoughts on this are that, you know, honestly cooking, it's a very open ended skill. I'm not trying to learn one specific dish or something like that. I'm trying to get better and I'm trying to improve my ability to get better through time with cooking. So I'm not actually so much creating a map with an X marks the spot. I'm trying to flesh out the map and then increase my capacity to explore the map based on my interest and desire. Um, so, you know, the real point of this skill is to explore the territory for the rest of my life. Contrast that with my skill goal for March, which is to fix my motorcycle. That's a much clearer project. I'll know when I'm done, when all the bits are back together and the thing starts up and rips again. 
So that is my first take on how to draw a map for ultra learning projects uh, using the example of cooking. I hope that was useful. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video like this and a post like this for every skill chunk that I do and I guarantee that by the end of this year I'm going to have a much finer grain understanding of how to approach this and how to explain it, talk about it, and also do it rapidly. You know, something that Scott talks about is how important research is for ultra learning projects and he said he gave the rule of thumb of something like 10 percent like however many hours you plan on spending on that ultra learning project take 10 percent of that and use that for research and so the idea is like do your research and then like do the thing and i and i hear that i hear that i think that's wise and something that i'm also thinking of is what if i choose to engage in a ultra learning project where it's kind of like okay now day zero start go and how can i not necessarily break that up so how can i because one of the principles is directness go straight ahead i think it's so important to start doing the thing i like the idea of starting doing the thing on day one so for example with cooking it i mean you're already cooking all the time i'm already cooking all the time so it's kind of like when did i really start this i kind of started it in December when I very first started reading some cooking books. Um, but I, I like the idea of having a method for approaching ultra learning projects where when I decide, you know what I want to learn, I want to learn whatever. And I've, I've, I've got space in my life for it. I'm going to dedicate space and I'm going to start today. And you can start doing the thing and designing the project at the same time and they inform each other during that initial phase. And then once you've done enough research as you've started, now you're, that research has been informed by the practice of the thing. And so you're off to the races. I think this really depends on if what you're learning is a skill like cooking versus a more academic topic like, like Scott Young's MIT challenge of, of learning the, the computer science curriculum. I don't think what I just described would have been appropriate for that. So anyways, I think there's really interesting ways to adapt all these concepts based on the style of skill that you're trying to learn. Um, and so, yeah, anyways, I will stop rambling. That is my take on uh, map making for ultra learning projects like cooking. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.